The, um, so that's more direct evidence. Now there's a, some work going on in, in states showing that they've actually measured the endorphin levels in these cells after acupuncture and showing uh, that the endorphin levels go down. So the endorphin levels during acupuncture go down while the cerebrospinal fluid levels go up. Or they measure cerebrospinal fluid from out here somewhere, so that cell is releasing it, so its levels go down, while the cerebrospinal fluid levels go up. That is, it's releasing it into the cerebrospinal fluid, uh, all of which supports the idea that endorphins are released during acupuncture. A very interesting approach that we're uh, working on now is to try to increase the uh, effect of acupuncture. And the simplest way to do it, there's two ways. If you increase the serotonin system, you should increase acupuncture. Or if you increase the endorphin system, either there or there or there. If you can increase those, you will have an increased effect as well. Uh, so the way to do this is uh, to block the enzymes which destroy endorphins. There are enzymes. Uh, sitting right on the cell membrane, uh, there and, and there, there are actual enzymes whose job it is, is to destroy the peptides, the endorphins that are being secreted. It's much like the uh, the, the enzymes um, that destroy acetylcholine at the synapse. Acetylcholinesterase will destroy acetylcholine so it doesn't stick around. Same thing here, you have enzymes which destroy the uh, peptides. So when there are chemicals which will block those enzymes, and we've been using them successfully, and we find that it, it, it is more than double the acupuncture analgesia. If you give the, the, the enzyme blockers alone, they do nothing, but if they, they're, you're releasing endorphin by acupuncture, they will make the endorphin persist, it will stay at the synapse longer. And you get not only more prolonged acupuncture, but increased acupuncture. The other thing we've done, is we've given uh, serotonin precursors, like uh, 5-hydroxytryptamine, which will enter the cell and also the synapse and increase the amount of serotonin in the terminals, and that also will increase the acupuncture effect. Now there's another uh, line of experiments. We've done a set of experiments recording from this peripheral nerve down here. while stimulating it electrically. So what we found there was that the nerve involved in this part of the loop is a large diameter non-pain afferent. If you remember the pain diagram I showed you in the last talk, the touch fibers are large diameter and the pain fibers are small diameter. Well, the, we found that the acupuncture nerves that are activated are uh, large diameter fibers, unlike, say, these fibers here, which are small diameter pain fibers. And furthermore, if you block these nerves by injecting xylocaine into the acupuncture point, you abolish the acupuncture effect. So you have to activate nerves. It's not just a matter of injecting energy or uh, just needling, you have to activate nerves. And if you block the nerves, then you get no acupuncture. We did another experiment in which we changed the pulse shape while recording from these nerves. And if you make the pulse shape uh, so narrow that it won't activate the nerves, but will still inject electrical energy, uh, you will also not get any acupuncture effect. So it's not just the energy of the electricity that's important, but the uh, stimulation of the nerve. And we believe it's a we're stimulating a deep muscle receptor, because in many control experiments that we did, where the needle was just in inserted uh, subcutaneously, instead of injecting putting the needle all the muscle, we just put the needle subcutaneously. Uh, we got didn't get our phenomenon. In fact, this is one of our control experiments.